as we start. So first I'd like to introduce Yolanda D. Tyler. Yolanda is a self-proclaimed playologist uh, who is passionate about play, mindfulness, and childhood development. When she is not playing, she is dreaming of ways to connect her work life with more play. Yolanda is also a registered yoga teacher, both for adults and children, and has a degree in psychology. She is an entrepreneur and started a family entertainment center called Amaya Papaya Play Lounge in Florida, where she resides uh, with her family. Um, and as the first Black-owned play space owner in Florida, she is also committed to, committed to increasing diversity by being a role model in the spaces in which she works, lives, and plays. And we really appreciate that. Yolanda, thank you for joining us today. Without further ado, take it away. Well, hello, everyone. And thank you for the warm welcome, Maya. That's really sweet of you. Uh, so to get started today, I wanted to do something really special with all of you so we can have some fun together and so we can all loosen up a bit. As you see, I have my antlers on, but I can guarantee you of two things today. This is going to change probably multiple times because I'm in the mood to play. And I do have a slight cough because I'm three weeks post being sick with bronchitis and it might sneak up on me. So be mindful of that and give me some grace. But with all of that being said, if you are sitting really close to your desk or whatever your computer is on, go ahead and come back a little bit, move back a little bit because we are going to do some yoga play. You guys take your arms and go around and then go backwards. And then we're going to take our hands and move them up to the sky. When you get up to the sky, you're going to hold on to the sun. Hold it. Hold it. Hold it. And now bring the sunshine down over your body so you can wake up. Go ahead and pull your arms out and yawn. Oh. And then we're going to roll a little bit. And we're going to stop. And then we're going to sway side to side. We're going to take our hands. We're going to bring them down to the side of our chair. And we're going to look to the left. Turn your body to where you feel fine. Come back to a neutral spine. Turn to your right. Turn a little bit more. We can look over your right shoulder. Come back to a neutral spine. Look at the camera. And then we're going to roll a little bit. You're going to stop and you're going to roll your hands back. Take your palms, put them on your knees. And then we're going to do some shoulder rolls going back. Ah, oh, that feels so good. And then we're going to roll our shoulders forward. We're going to roll our shoulders back. Forward. You're going to tell me to stop. But I'm not. And we're going to open our mouths really wide. And then we're going to close our mouths. We're going to open our mouths really wide. You're going to smile at me. Let me see your teeth. And then you're going to put a bubble in your mouth. And you're going to pop it. Every morning I wake up. We're going to roll one more time. We're going to take our palms, bring them up to the sky. Hold on to the sun. Hold it, hold it, hold it. We're going to bring down that good energy all over our bodies from the sun. And we're going to bring it down. And then you're going to give me a high five with your right hand. You're going to give me a high five with your left hand. And then you're going to give me high fives with both. And then we're going to finish up our song by rolling forward. Go ahead and groove to the song. Go backward. Let me see you move however you'd like to. High five, y'all. That was awesome. So that was fun. <laughs> so
So like Maya said, my name is Yolanda, and I am totally a self-proclaimed playologist. I'm so happy to be here with you guys today. So a little bit more about me so you can understand my perspective here. My story doesn't start here in sunny Florida where I am today. I'm actually from upstate New York. When I was a teenager, I dreamed of opening a place where teens could go to hang out, to be safe, and to play. From a young age, I've been an enthusiast of all things Disney, and yellow is my favorite color. I think it's time for me to change my filter right now, so bear with me. Ah, that's a great one. I'm feeling that filter. Are you guys feeling it? Give me a thumbs up if you are. <laughs> so remember that place that I told you that I wanted to open for teens when I was little? Well, after being a counselor for at-risk girls for a little over seven years, I started to understand that that place to play actually needed to be a place where parents could go to learn to play with their kids before their kids got older. See, while counseling my girls, I realized that parents need, needed to understand their kids a bit better. And there was one key thing missing. Those parents did not understand how to play with their kids. So that began my business venture of what would become, let me show it to you guys. This is one of them. My award-winning business called Amaya Papaya Play Lounge, which yes, it's named after someone. It's my daughter, Amaya. There, I develop programs, play groups, and even support groups for parents, all based on my belief of the importance of play. Guys, I think it's time for a filter change again. I think I wanna be a little bit more festive, so bear with me as I turn on my lights. So, play. I'm here to talk with you about the serious business of play. Play. I know, when you hear that word, you instantly think about children. But I would like to help you reframe your thought of that word. And I'd like to challenge you to think of yourself when you hear the word play as well. One of my goals in life is to help communities bridge the gap between work and play. Through my life's work, I've been able to teach parents how to play with their children. I've been able to help children enhance their play and I've been able to help professionals be more mindful of finding play in the midst of the work that they do. According to Gallup, 70% of Americans are dissatisfied with their work. But <laughs> of course, not y'all at Brain Pop, right? <laughs> so I am annoyed with our system of this thing that we call work-life balance. It seems that we've gotten so caught up in the circle of work life that we've forgotten to play. We go to work to work, and then we come home to work. Our mental health is suffering, our bodies are suffering, our families are suffering. It seems that we are in work mode way more than we are in relaxation mode. And that to me, it's a problem. This mindset, it's killing us, y'all. Let's change the scenario. So when my grandmother was alive, my family would meet at my mother's home for Taco Tuesday dinner night. That's my granny right there and that's little Amaya. Every evening would be filled with laughter and some type of shenanigans induced by play. One of these evenings, my daughter and my granny decided to turn their Icy Pop dessert into a race. Granny and my daughter cut open their Icy Pop and the race began. They started gulping down the Icy Pop to see who would finish it the fastest. What probably took probably about one minute seemed like it lasted forever. Granny finished her Icy Pop while my daughter still had half of hers left. In that moment, they were equals enjoying a simple moment of play. 
What's significant about this moment is that Granny and my daughter leveled the playing field. They were equally engaged. No one was in control of the play. It happened naturally. After the race was over, I'm sure at least five more games were created before the night was over. Play is important for all generations, right? We learn through play from one another. Play is not just for children, guys. It's important for us all at every moment in our lives. There are many different ways to play. A few of my favorite ways to play, of course, guys, I live here in Orlando, so going to the House of the Mouse, dancing, listening to TED, Walk, TED Talks, I did one, and learning about metaphysics and traveling. My most recent trip was to Philadelphia this past summer. I love it there. When I'm not playing, I'm dreaming of ways to connect my work life more with play. Focusing on play allows me the freedom to be mindful and to stress less as I achieve my personal and my professional goals. So I am going to turn on my chat because I'd like to know what are some of your favorite ways to play? You can type some of those into the chat so I can see them. Come on, don't be shy. Legos, audiobooks. That's one of my favorite things too, Maya. The swing set, that's awesome. Knitting, that's really cool. Whoa, there's so many. So, do you have a hobby? Do you collect things? If you haven't thought of anything, do you like learning about new things? What type of things do you do to stay physically active? I want to look at some more of these. Gardening, that's one of my favorite things too, guys. Rock climbing, that's really cool. Hiking, scuba diving, snorkeling, that's really cool. I want to try that one day. Peloton, yes. Dungeons and Dragons, that's pretty amazing. Kayaking, wandering the park, that's one of my favorite things too. Thank you guys so much. All of these things are examples of how play is fostered through what I like to call the three C's of play. Community creativity, and cognitive development. The first C is community. From the moment we began to play as children, we started to create our community. From interactions with family to interactions with other people outside of the home, the social interactions that we encounter from the start of our life begins to shape and create the community that we will imagine for ourselves for years to come. My daughter's first word was dada. I know mama's right? Dada. <laughs> As she began to talk, one of the first things I taught her when gathering to play with friends was to learn their names instead of just calling them that boy or that girl. On the playground, she would say, hi, what is your name? Look at her. She's so cute. <laughs> she would say, my name is Amaya. This concept of learning actual names increases social skills and it helps to build a foundation for community. One of my favorite things to do to encourage creating community when I'm leading a, a children's group is to sing the name song during circle time. Pardon me, guys. <coughs> I have a name, you have a name, I must call her by her name, Maya. Maya, that's her name. Hi, Maya. And hello, everyone else. Hey, I hope I don't have to sing the next one. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> have you guys introduced yourselves to your coworkers lately? What you call networking, I call creating community. Take about one minute or so now to say hello to the people in your breakout room. I'll see you when you get back, okay? Yeah, when we, we said, you know, say your name and like your favorite color. See you soon.
Maya, if you can give me a thumbs up when they come back in, that would be awesome. I will, and I didn't join the link because I didn't want to lose the screen sharing bit, but whoever's okay. still here can talk to me if they want. Maya, Maya. purple. <laughs> <laughs> hey. Yvonne, look what I have. I wanted to show you something since you're in this room. Check this out. I, I, I don't know. I want you to know that I love this thing that you made. Oh my gosh, that's adorable. Isn't that a crazy, amazing thing? I love it. Adorable. So thank you. I Every time I look at it, I remember, I remember that welcome. holiday party. Yeah. Uh, it was great. Yep. Yeah. I need to get one of those Rubik's Cubes that you guys have. Oh, I think we can hook you up. I think we oh can Oh my hook gosh, you up. I would totally want that. <laughs> so, um, perfect. So uh, do you think we should, has a minute passed? Should I close all I the rooms? I think so, yeah, bring them back okay, in. Okay, I'm going to close them. I'm sure they're having uh -huh. fun. Of course, the room's going to close in 50 seconds. So Perfect. that's your cue, Yolanda. <laughs> uh, thank you. I hope people got to meet new people. That's the most important thing. Seriously. Oh, I like this one. Oh, and I like that one too. Yeah, I think everybody should be back now. All right. Hey guys, how are you doing? We're actually, so, wait, hold on a second. I don't see, right. I think, sorry, the room is filling up. Give it another 10 seconds, apologies. Cool. I always call that the magic of Zoom. It's always super fun. Fine. There we go. Back to you, Yolanda. Perfect. <laughs> well, welcome back. I hope you got to meet someone new. So for this first step of incorporating play, into your life, we want to delve into finding your community. Take a moment and think to yourself, who are your people? Who are your people? Where do you find them? Recently, I connected with an international yoga community and a community of like-minded people who love plants and gardening. Sidebar, I call myself like a mini farmer. <laughs> Your community is where you come alive. This is a place where you network or connect. It is the space where you thrive or that you want to thrive. The next C is creativity. Before we go into that, guys, though, ah, I need to change my filter because these are so much fun. I think I like this one. Here we go. Here we go. So people are naturally creative. Play is natural. Creativity, it's play. When was the last time that you truly played? Play produces some of the most interesting ideas and concepts. However simplistic play seems to you, there is an entire complex symphony that can happen in your universe as you play. When we use our imagination during play, we learn empathy, we learn to regulate our emotions, and we learn to problem solve. While structure is inevitable in our society, unstructured play should be done as often as possible. This is where our personalities are truly created and goals are constructed. My daughter loves playing with her Barbies. You see her? Oh, look, she wants to wear my hat. Oh, look at that. Too cool. The magic of Zoom. <laughs> Playing with her Barbies now is very different than when she played with them when she was age three. But shh, don't tell her I told you guys that she still plays with her Barbies. She turns 16 next week. <sighs> or, or is it the same? I, I mean, I don't know. It might be the same. When she was younger, she gave her Barbies voices as they communicated with one another. 
As she got older, her collection got bigger and the adventures that she imagined for them became even greater. Today, when she plays with her Barbies, she practices her braiding skills, she creates new outfits for them, and she constructs food for them out of various materials. They no longer have voices, but when she is playing with them, she is transported to a relaxing place free from chores mm -hmm, and high school homework. So the second step of incorporating play into your life is to be creative. Take a moment and think about how you are creative. If you'd like to put it into the chat, go ahead because I'm going to change my filter again. Let me see them. Tell us how you're creative. Very cool. When was the last time that you truly gave yourself the freedom to be creative? Did you complete a project for work? Did you construct that thing at home that you've been wanting to complete forever? Did you think of a new recipe for your family to try? Don't remember? Ask yourself, how can I live more creatively? Hold on one second. I have a filter for that. You guys ready for it? Stand by. This is this is the best one to me. I love it. Right? <laughs> totally awesome. I love that you guys are still telling me how you're creative. Have you ever solved a problem? That, my friend, was you being creative. Since the pandemic started, I constructed a garden, told you guys about that, where I get to do yoga and I meditate. I've come up with new business ideas based on my new gardening hobby and the new space that I constructed. The last C is cognitive development. Cognitive skill development involves the progressive building of skills such as attention, memory, and thinking. These skills allow us to process sensory information and encourage us to evaluate, analyze, remember, make comparisons, and understand cause and effect. Although some cognitive skill development is related to our genetic makeup, most cognitive skills are learned. That means thinking and learning skills can be improved with practice and the right training. So when my daughter was little, her favorite book was Nuffle Bunny by Mo Willems. There's me. That picture, guys, is of me sitting inside my former indoor playground. I, I sold it back in 2019. Yeah, so two years ago I sold that. But, so when my daughter was little, I told you guys her favorite book was uh, Nuffle Bunny by Mo Willems. I would read that book to her multiple times a day. Then her dad, my husband would read that book to her multiple times a day as well. Sometimes we read that book to her between five and 10 times in one day. When we weren't reading Nuffle Bunny to her, yep, she was reading Nuffle Bunny to us. Her reading began as her telling us what she remembered us reading to her and eventually her identifying actual words in that book. By pre-K, she was reading that entire book without help. By first grade, she was reading chapter books about Junie B. Jones. In fifth grade, she was reading the Kingdom Keeper series. And now in high school, it takes her only one week to finish chapter books. My kid loves to read. <coughs> Learning should never end. When choosing to learn more, it is important to allow yourself to learn about things that excite you. Of course, in adulthood, we tend to learn more so we can increase our cash flow, right? But please don't forget to focus on learning too. You know, like you guys do for the kids at Brain Pop, right? Yeah, increased knowledge in any form helps to expand your mental capacity, thereby increasing your overall net worth. So the third step of incorporating play into your life is to continuously learn about new things that excite you. How often do you learn? Tell me, how often do you guys learn? 
Doom, doom, doom. Daily. <laughs> we learn about new ideas, concepts, and things daily, guys. Some of the things that we learn about are strategic. Others are based on our daily experiences. Both are important. Even more important is that you are mindful about both. Sign up for a certification class. Learn something new by watching YouTube. Or talk to someone with an imposing view than you. With an open mind, of course. Even if you don't understand why they believe in what they believe in. Do me a favor. In the chat, I want you to drop me a line about what you think that you'd like to learn about next. I'll give you a moment. What would you guys like to learn about next? Mm, design, investing, yes. Central Asian cooking, that's really cool. German language, languages, bike repair, oh my gosh, music, astronomy, American Sign Language, e-commerce. So those are really cool, guys. I most recently completed my 200 hour, my prenatal, and my trauma-informed yoga certifications. I am currently in the process of learning how to publish a children's book. A, a, I'm sorry, <laughs> an educational curriculum for play space owners. And I am in the process of creating an ebook about mindfulness and business for professionals. So a couple of things that I want you guys to remember as we begin to wrap up. Three things. Play fosters creativity and problem solving. The use of imagination during play directly helps to shape your perspectives on your community and your surroundings. Also, play allows the ability to integrate emotion with cognition. Focusing on play and a play lifestyle will allow you the freedom to be mindful and to stress less as you achieve your personal and your professional goals. During this pandemic, it is very important not to get lost in the noise of mental anguish. Remembering the importance of play is one of the ways to stay focused. My hope is that you have been able to connect my stories with your own personal stories and that you can begin to focus on play as you navigate through your own work-life balance. In everything, I hope you remember the importance of play. skin a marinky dinky dink skin a marinky do I love you. I really do. Skin a marinky dinky dink, skin a marinky do. I love you. If you're home and you know it, sing it with me. I love you in the morning and in the afternoon. I love you in the evening and underneath the moon. Skin a marinky dinky dink, skin a marinky do. I love you. Mwah, brain pop, but pause because I'm not done. But thank you for your time today. And before we wrap up, we're going to end our session with a little bit of holiday themed yoga play. So same thing as we tried in the beginning. If you are sitting really close to your computer, go ahead and scoot back a little bit because we are gonna get ready to have some fun with a little bit of Uptown Funk. Can you guys hear it? Listen to the beat. Let's listen to it. Here we go. All right, we're gonna start by doing some Christmas yoga. We're going to take our arms, bring them all the way into the sky. We're gonna grasp each hand and we're gonna move over to the left you are now a candy cane you're doing a candy cane stretch go over to your right and you now know how to become a christmas candy cane with yoga go ahead and release and come back to a neutral spine next up is hanukkah we're gonna do a dreidel twist go ahead and take your hands bring them down to the side of your chair and you're gonna twist your body and look over to the right Come back to a neutral spine, twist your body and look over to the left. Come back to center. Next up, we are going to become the sun for solstice. So go ahead and raise your arms, 
and your hands into the sky, move them out about hip width distance, and then you're gonna take your feet, separate them, and stretch all of your limbs, pretending that you are the sun, shining your rays really, 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 really well. The sunshine holds so much energy. The next thing we're gonna do is come back to a neutral spine, and for Duvali, we are gonna become twinkle lights. So go ahead and push your arms out straight in front of you, and you are gonna open and shut your hands like the twinkle lights that get lit. Ooh, good job. Open and shut them. This is really good if you're taking a break from working on your cell phones or your computers all day. Go ahead and come back to neutral. Next up, we're going to go into Kwanzaa. You guys are going to take your arms, reach them out really, really wide. Now take both arms and bring them around yourselves and give yourselves a, a tight squeeze. This is an Umoja unity hug. While you're hugging yourself, let's go ahead and rock to the beat. Loving yourself a little bit. Mm-hmm. It's one of my favorite things to do. Self-love is the best, best love, guys, right? Go ahead and release. Move back to your computer if you'd like to. Get really comfortable because now we are going to get ready to set an intention for the day. I'd like to offer up my intention for you guys if you don't have one for yourself of playing more and stressing less. I'd like you to go ahead and take both of your palms, put them over your forehead. Close your eyes if you'd like to. And I want you to go ahead and set that intention. It can be more play, to stress less, whatever intention you'd like to set, it's yours. Now from your forehead or your mind's eye or your crown, whatever you'd like to call that space, go ahead and take your palms, bring your palms to your heart. Think about that intention, love on that intention, Breathe in, blow it out. Take that intention, bring it down to your belly or lost my earring. <laughs> I like to say my womb space. Think about that intention. Breathe it in, blow it out. And then we're just gonna sit for a few moments. You can look at me or you can close your eyes. But just think about that intention that you set today. Think about our chat that we just had about play. Thank all of you for listening to me speak today. It's really been a pleasure. I really have loved looking at everything that you guys have said in the chat. I'm gonna go back and look at a lot more of them before um, I sign off for the day. I'd like to wish all of you peace, love, and sunshine, and happy holidays, everyone. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much, Yolanda. Wow, that was so fantastic. What a wonderful, wonderful, energizing way to start our day. Mm -hmm. Now we're gonna take a 15 minute break. And when you come back, we're gonna play some online games. But just a reminder, we want you all to know, please use your desktop or your laptop, no tablets or mobile devices. You must use an up-to-date browser, Chrome or Firefox is preferred, Internet Explorer, Explorer is not supported. And we will see you back here in the same Zoom room in 15, which brings us to 1.35. Let's get ready to have some fun and see you then.